Microphones are everywhere today, from our cell phones to our headphones and even in our cars. It would be hard to think about modern day life without the microphone. I for one would be without a job. So just where did it all begin? The first ever sound recording device was made by a Frenchman named Adenauer Leiden Scott de Monteville. His phonograph sought to mechanically replicate the human ear. It worked by having a membrane that would vibrate with the user's voice and engrave the vibrations onto a piece of paper or other material. Unfortunately, Adenauer didn't quite crack how to actually play back these recordings, so the device only created a visual representation of the sound. Adenauer was able to sell a few of these devices to laboratories and other facilities that used them to study sound. However, he never sold enough to make a profit from the device and spent the remainder of his life as a librarian. In 1877, Thomas Edison patented the phonographic cylinder. Edison's design worked much much like Adenauer's, except for instead of engraving the sound onto a piece of paper, the vibrations were engraved onto a piece of tin foil that was wrapped around a drum. The user spoke into a funnel, and a diaphragm created indentions on the tin foil. And when the user wanted to play back what they had recorded, they simply placed the stylus at the beginning of the recording and spun the cylinder. And the indentions in the tin foil forced the diagram to vibrate, much like a speaker works today. While this was a start, the audio produced was barely even audible, and Edison lost interest in the device and moved on to other projects. Alexander Graham Bell, the guy who invented the telephone, further improved upon Edison's design. By replacing the tin foil with wax, which didn't wear out as frequently, this also made the audio louder and a bit clearer. But that still wasn't enough, and by 1910, the gramophone and its flat disc overtook Edison's cylinder, as the primary way recordings were stored. The flat disc had many advantages over the cylinder. For one, they were more portable, and since you could record on both sides of the disc, you could store more information on them. They were also easier to produce. These early records were made out of shellac and got the name 78s because of how many revolutions they turned in a minute. The 78s were the dominant form of recording from World War I up until about World War II, when in 1950 most had made the switch from shellac to vinyl records. Vinyl records, while much more expensive, had better quality and toughness compared to shellac. They were even advertised as unbreakable, even though this wasn't exactly the truth. Along with records, photofilm was also used as a way for audio playback. However, it wasn't used in home. It was mostly reserved for projectors as a means to add sound to movies. In 1948, Ampex released its first cassette using magnetic tape. The magnetic tape had much higher quality than records and were much easier to edit, as the tape could be physically cut and spliced back together. Magnetic tape also marked the end of the mechanical recording era and the start of digital formats. And by 1970, cassettes overtook vinyl records. However, in 1981, Philip demonstrated their first compact disc, and by the late 1990, CDs overtook cassette tapes. This, of course, was until MP3 came out and wiped out any form of physically carrying around a disc or a tape. Invented in 1993, it overtook the CD in the early 2000s, and this is where we are today, with everybody having a device that can hold the equivalent of hundreds, maybe even thousands of CDs. Well guys, that does it for a brief history of recording. If you like the video style, please feel free to check out our other brief history videos right here. And as always, please enjoy the rest of your internet going experience.